Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now here we have a 6 GHz portable spectrum analyzer with built-in signal generator. Now this covers from 35 MHz right up to 6.2 GHz. It also has an inbuilt battery and apparently it's 3000 mAh and the specifications say it should last up to 4 hours. Now included in the box we get a couple of rigid coax patch cables which are terminated with SMA plugs. We also get a screen protector, a USB-C cable which is used to either charge the internal battery or use some PC software which I'll show you later in the video. You also get an SMA female adapter, a stylus which can be used with that 3.2 inch color touchscreen but of course you don't have to use the stylus, you can just use your finger or any part of your body that you feel would do the job. The casing is made from metal and the front panel hosts eight buttons which are used to control the analyzer in conjunction with the touchscreen. Now on the left side of the SA6 we have two SMA female sockets, one of which is the RF input and the other is the signal generator RF output. On the right side we have a charging LED indicator, a type C USB socket and then we have the power button. Now on the rear we find some print which states an absolute maximum RF input level of plus 10 dBm which is just a mere 10 milliwatts so make sure to use attenuators in line if you're measuring RF outputs from devices like handheld ham radio transceivers as their output power will be quite substantial compared to what the input can handle. Now powering on the SA6 is performed by holding in the power button for a couple of seconds. You'll then be presented with the boot up screen. Now let me just quickly pause the video here to take a look at what this says on that boot up screen. Now what I find interesting here is that it appears this SA6 is actually an Aronst SSA Mark IV. But the question is, is it? Now we'll talk more about this in a moment and I do apologize if I've not pronounced that correctly. Now once the SA6 is booted up, you can use the bottom buttons down the right side to choose your settings. The screen has a DBM scale going vertically on the left side and then a frequency span horizontally down the bottom. You can manually adjust the span using the span minus and plus buttons and if we press the menu button we're now presented with some choices and for this we can use the touch screen. Now if we tap on the frequency we can either enter a center frequency and the span or we can enter a start and stop frequency. On the generator tab, we can enable or disable the RF generator, we can set the frequency and we can set the power output. Tracking mode also can be enabled which will provide further selections like SWR, S11 or S21 measurements. Over on the amplitude tab, this allows you to change the screen displays data now this including changing the step size of the vertical section of that graph. On the device tab, you can enable or disable Bluetooth, enter a frequency shift or amplitude shift, and the device ID along with firmware version should be shown. But wait, let me just talk about this screen for a second. Well, firstly, I tried updating the firmware to the latest version using the Aaron software. However, the firmware appeared to take but the device ID changed to what you can see now, all set to minus one. Now there was a number here before I did the upgrade, but I didn't take any footage of it, so I'm unsure what it actually was, but I know it wasn't minus one. Also, the Bluetooth enable or disable toggle at the top appears to work, or at least on screen, but there's no Bluetooth detected from any of my devices. Now I've tried iOS, Android, and my PC, but none of them will detect any Bluetooth signals coming from this device. So my guess is that there's no Bluetooth module inside this SA6. Now moving on, and we have the markers tab where we can configure markers to have a specific frequency and color. You can also store presets so you can recall configurations and frequency ranges with just a push of a button. Now I'm going to attach a little telescopic antenna for a demonstration. Now this didn't come with the SA6, but it should provide some reception of some signals to show you. Notice how the center frequency is at 850 megahertz 
and just above at 868 megahertz, we see some transmission peaks. Now these are most likely LoRa transmissions being detected. And the markers tab allows you to enable the waterfall feature whereby the screen will split to show a waterfall and that scope. With a center frequency of 850 megahertz, you can clearly see the some mobile phone masks, LTE uplinks. If we go back to marker and enable them, you can see the markers appear at the peaks. Now here we have four markers enabled and their data is shown at the top of the screen in that little table. As mentioned earlier, there is a Windows software package that you can use to remotely control the SA6. And for this, I use a software package from the Arents.com website. I'll head to the download page and scroll to the bottom. Now what's interesting here is that Java is required for this application to run. What's also interesting is that I had the latest version of Java already installed on my Windows 11 computer. However, the application will not run so I had to uninstall the latest Java version and use this specific version, which you can download from the link here. Now with the SA6 turned on and plugged into my computer using that supplied USB cable and have the application installed and running, you can click the little USB icon on the top right to select the COM port of the SA6. Now once selected and connected, the screen will look like this, showing some live data. Now using the menu system on the left of the application, you can now adjust settings like you did on the device directly. The frequency setting can also be set to a center frequency with a span or a start and end range. Using the mouse, you can scroll left and right on the screen to change frequency. You can also click and drag up and down to adjust the amplitude so you can see the noise floor level if required. So now let's take a look at a couple of practical examples of what information the SA6 can provide us. Now I think the most obvious feature would be to measure the spurious emissions from a ham radio transceiver. Now don't forget to use the appropriate attenuators in line because you do not want to input any more than 10 dBm into the SA6. So here we are on the two meter ham band with the markers enabled and you can see the fundamental second harmonic and a third harmonic with the dbm figure shown in that little call out on the tip of each peak now as well as the data showing this way you can also change it so it's in a table format so the data is shown in a table format at the top right of the display another use case for the sa6 would be to measure filters using the rf generator and tracking feature for this first test, I'll test the Flamingo FM band stop from Nuelec. Now what this is supposed to do is filter out any strong signals on the FM broadcast band. So roughly between 80 megahertz up to 108 megahertz. Attaching the output and input connections from the SA6 to the band stop will allow us to measure how much signal is being stopped between those frequencies. With the center frequency set to 100 megahertz, a span of 50 megahertz we turn on the generator and the tracking to show this rather interesting plot here we can see the band stop doing what it's supposed to do indicated by that dip in the middle as the band stop attenuates those frequencies okay so what about the other way around a filter which only allows certain frequencies through i.e a bandpass filter now I reviewed this little device a few videos back, but port four is a bandpass filter for between 80 to 110 megahertz. So if we connect to the SA6 in the same way as we did before, we can now see a hump instead of a dip. And that's because this filter is attempting to only let frequencies of between 80 to 110 megahertz through, hence why it's called a bandpass filter. Now another measurement we can take is the attenuation levels of an RF attenuator. Now this time I'm using a small 20 dB attenuator from Neuralec with a minus 15 dB output from that signal generator of the SA6. Now we can clearly see here the hump's peak is reading very close to minus 35 dB. So it does look like this attached 20 dB attenuator is actually attenuating the signal to the level that it's specified for. Now there's lots of other measurements that you can take with the SA6 or any spectrum analyzers in general. 
like SWR for example, but you do need an SWR bridge for this to work. Unfortunately, I don't have one to hand to show you. Anyway guys, this is the SA6 and I guess it's a bit of a competition for those tiny SA Ultras, but it does appear to be a ripoff of an Arintz product. Now if you have one of these original Arintz products, then let me know down in the comments below if you think that these two items are working similar. Minus the Bluetooth, I think it does work pretty good. It's a shame it doesn't have Bluetooth because there's actually an Android app which you can use, which works only over Bluetooth. Anyway guys, if you're interested in this, I'll leave a link to where I got it from below so you can check it out for yourself. Till next video, stay safe, thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.